Welcome to the Imagination Station. I am Drew Colby and this workshop is called The Science of Shadows and Light and How to Make Hand Shadows. Hello everyone! My name is Drew Colby and today we're going to be exploring shadows and light with the help of some shadowy animal friends. Now all you need is your hands and a wall and a light. Now you could use just the light of the sun that works really well or if you're indoors or if it's raining or if it's dark you could use a torch. Remember never look directly into your light source or at the sun it might hurt your eyes. This is quite a nice little torch. It's got a little bulb at the front and it makes a very good light for shadows like this. <laughs> Look at that shadow light. Brilliant. If you don't have a torch like this, you could use a mobile phone light. Mobile phone lights are great. They're very, very small as well. And they look a bit like this. Wow, look at all those shadows. All those shadow hands. So that's a mobile phone light. If you can't use a mobile phone light, you might be using the mobile phone to watch this video. Then you could also use a cling, 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 a lamp. This is a little sort of desk lamp that's got a bit of a clamp on it. You can see. And you can clamp that onto a table or the back of a chair and then you can position the lamp and this is quite important because the light needs to be in a certain position for you to make the shadows now my light is this thing over here and i have a kind of shoulder height so that it's perfect for me to make my shadows my light is a little bit specialized because it's my job so I've got a special light but these other lights work really well and you might even find other lights you have at home that work for you and in fact it's fun to experiment with different kinds of lights and see what it does to the shadow because not all lights make exactly the same shadows so I think we're nearly ready to start are you ready to start can you give me a thumbs up and in fact, this is good because we need to warm up our hands. We don't want our hands to get tired, so we need to warm them up. So let's see, let's start by making nice spread out hands and then a fist. A nice spread out hands and a fist. Nice spread out hands and a fist. And when you make a spread out hand, take a nice deep breath in. And give them a shake. Shake them high, shake them low, shake them high. And now our hands are nicely warmed up. You can also stretch out really, really far. And in, and out, and in. Very, 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 very good. Now we're ready to make our first animal. And this is a nice, simple one. It's an animal that's made with one hand and I think most of you will already know this or you might be able to do it very quickly. What you're going to do is take your right hand and put these two fingers in the middle together and then put the fingers down onto the thumb like that and these two things here are kind of the ears and there is a little eye and it's a kind of deer. Now you can add another little detail to this deer if you bend, this is the ring finger, you bend the ring finger down like that, you suddenly have a little eye in the deer's head. Now make the deer get bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. How did I make that happen? How did I make the deer get bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller? 
I'm sure some of you would have seen how I did it, and I'm going to show you again. There's the deer. It's bigger. It's smaller. It's bigger. Smaller. Well, I made it bigger by moving my hand, which was making the deer closer to the light. And to make it smaller, I made my hand move further from the light. How does that make the shadow get bigger and smaller? Well, now we get to a science bit, and it's not a boring science bit, it's actually quite a fun science bit. Because when you make your shadow shape and you go towards the light, it definitely gets bigger. And when you move it away, it definitely gets smaller. Well, do you know, if you've watched a film, if somebody goes towards the camera, they get bigger. And if they move away from the camera, they get smaller. It's a little bit like that. Or if someone is close to you, they look a certain size. And if they're very far away, they look small. Even though the person is actually always the same size, they look smaller to you. Well, it's a little bit like that with lights. But I'm going to show you with this piece of paper why the shadow gets bigger and smaller. So the light coming out of a torch or out of a light like this is not just a, a tube of light, a solid tube. It's actually like a cone like an ice cream cone. If you imagine an ice cream cone, at the bottom, it's very, very narrow. And at the top, where the good stuff is, the ice cream, it's very wide because the ice cream has to sit inside there and then you hold the narrow bit of the cone. So I've improvised a little cone of paper to show you. Now, if you can imagine, this narrow bit is the light. That's where the light is. The narrow bit there. You can see the little gap. And the wide bit here is the bit further away from the light, so that would be where the wall is. Now let's imagine we have an object. I'm going to say my hand. My hand is always the same size. There it is. It's the same size. If I put my hand towards the wide end of the light, so close to the wall, the shadow is quite small. If I put my hand in the middle of the beam of light, so about here, the shadow is bigger. Now, if I put my hand very close to the light source, which is the little narrow end of the cone, the shadow is massive. And why this is, is because there's very little light area here, and there's a lot of light area here. So the hand, which is always the same size, doesn't cover as much of the light area here because there's so much of it as it does when the hand is here. And that's why the shadow gets bigger the closer it gets to the light and smaller the further away it gets from the light. Now let's make another animal. So we made our nice single-handed deer. Now I'm going to show you another single-handed animal, but then I'm going to make it into a double-handed animal. And this is a, a wolf. And this is how you do it. Put your hand like this, close the fingers together, curl in the index finger at the top, wiggle the thumb, and the thumb is your wolf's ear, and this is the wolf's nose, and this is the wolf's mouth. Now, you might not be able to move that finger without these fingers following. So you might need to have a little bit of a practice holding these fingers and wiggling that finger to make the mouth move, because we really want our wolf to look like a nice wolf. And the wolf's top jaw is wider than the wolf's bottom jaw. So a wolf wants to look like this, and not like this. But I promised you I'd make a two-handed wolf, and this is how we do it. It's very similar, but it's got a lot more expression. So we take our two hands, we put them together, and then we curl the index fingers in again, just like before, split the thumbs to make two ears, 
And there is our two-handed wolf. And the wolf is wiggling its eyebrow and it's yawning. <sighs> and it's panting. Like that. Now, we know how to make the wolf shadow bigger and smaller by moving it towards the light and away from the light, like that. But how big do you think a shadow can be? If we had a, a big area like a football pitch and we had a big light, do you think the wolf shadow could be as big as the football pitch? Do you think it could? Well, let's imagine for a second that this is a football pitch. And I'm going to actually make my light very much bigger for a second. Oh, look at that. Let's see how big the shadow of the wolf can be. So here's our shadow wolf. And now it's growing bigger and bigger. And now it's filling the whole football pitch. Wow, look at that. Because you see, if you've got a strong enough light and a very, very big area, and your hand or your object is close to the light, it will be as big as the area the light covers. Now here's a little bit of a trick question. How small do you think the shadow can be? Do you think it could be as small as an ant? Do you think it could be as small as a mouse? Do you think it could be as small as this? Well, let's do a little experiment. Here is our wolf again. Now the wolf is getting big. Now the wolf is getting small. Smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and... Ah, although the shadow can be very, very big, it can only ever be as small as the object making the shadow. So if it was an ant, the shadow would be the size of an ant. If it's my hand, it's the size of my hand. So that's really interesting, isn't it? That the shadow could be so big, but only be small as the object making it. Now, one of the reasons why this is interesting when you make hand shadows is you can really play with that scale. You could make a small wolf like that and a big wolf like that. And one of my favorite things is to make the cat. I'll show you how to make the cat. So you go like this, you poke up the little finger and the index finger and put your thumb in like that. And there is the cat's head and tail. But that doesn't look quite right, does it? I mean, the cat's very skinny and the tail is too small. Well, watch what happens when I move my elbow towards the light and the hand a little bit away from the light. Suddenly, the cat's shape is perfect. The tail is the right length and the head is not too big and the body is not too skinny. And the reason that is, of course, is that the elbow is closer to the light, so it's making a bigger shadow, and the hand is further from the light, so it's making a smaller shadow. And there's the lovely cat. Now the cat is having a wash. <laughs> the right hand goes like this. All the fingers together to make a kind of point and stick up the thumb like that. That is the deer's nose and ear or part of the horn. Then we take our left hand and we imagine we're holding a ball like that. So the fingers bend in like you've got a ball in the middle of your hand there. And then we put that against the thumb and the palm of the right hand. And there is a beautiful deer with antlers. And if you think you might want to give your deer an eye, you just lift up index finger on the right hand and there is an eye. And maybe you want a mouth as well like that. Beautiful deer. When you're outside the next time and the sun is shining, 
I want you to make some shadows in the sun and see what happens with your shadow. Is it the same as using a battery powered torch or an electric light where there's a cone shaped beam of light or does it actually work a little bit differently? Does your shadow get bigger as you move it towards the sun or something else happens perhaps?